Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I thought I'd mix it up a bit and I feel like I haven't filmed in my living room for a while, so here we are. Now today's video, if you've watched my previous videos, you'll know that I do have an exam coming up. The exam that I'm actually sitting is the CII RO6 exam, which is the final one that I require in order to get my level four diploma in regulated financial advice. However, RO6, with it being the last exam, is actually made up of all the other ones as well. So I'm using this time to actually recap on RO2 specifically, which is all the investments. So believe it or not, this is actually part of my revision as well. In terms of, I feel like explaining something to somebody else makes it stick in a little bit better. So we'll try that and hopefully, if you are sitting the RO2 exam in the near future, or the RO6, you'll also find this useful. So do let me know in the comment section down below what you think. So in this video, we're gonna cover off the modern portfolio theory, and more specifically, what it is, the concept of risk, the concept of risk of reduction, the efficient frontier, and also discussing the, the two main types of risk. So bear with me while I take you through it. So let's jump right in. So the modern portfolio theory is all about constructing investment portfolios in a way in which you maximise returns and minimise the risk. So it actually takes into account all of the investments within the portfolio and the potential risk. So the theory actually assumes that if the investor was faced with two investments where the returns are exactly the same, however, one is riskier than the other, they would always opt for the less risky return in that scenario. So ultimately the conclusion of the modern portfolio theory is the fact that a diversified portfolio of imperfectly correlated assets can provide high returns with the least amount of volatility. So let's discuss risk. So the most commonly used measure of risk is the volatility of returns, which is called standard deviation. It measures how widely the actual return on an investment varies around its average or expected return. So the greater the standard deviation, the greater the volatility and therefore the associated risk. And standard deviation is actually designated by the Greek letter sigma. So basically, the larger the standard deviation the bigger the risk. Now an important thing to note is that standard deviation is normally calculated using past performances as it calculates the difference between the average or mean return and actual return but as I say it is based on past data which isn't always reliable. So let's talk about the concept of risk reduction and there are two main ways of actually reducing risk and that's via diversity diversifying and via hedging. So diversification is basically having a number of different investments with varying levels of correlation so that no matter what happens or what impacts the market or the actual investments, they average themselves out in terms of the losses that you end up making because you could see that another investment within that portfolio is actually booming compared to the one that's making losses. So when those two even themselves out, you know, you're either a break even point or the losses are simply a lot lower than what they would have been if you only held that one investment. So in effect, the downside risk of one investment is offset by the upside of another investment. So in an ideal world, you want a portfolio full of negatively correlated assets, which unfortunately in real life is very unlikely and very difficult to achieve. And hedging is actually protecting an existing investment position by taking another position that will actually increase in value if the existing position falls in value and the most commonly used method for that are the use of derivatives 
So now let's discuss the efficient frontier. The efficient frontier actually describes the relationship between the return that can be expected from a portfolio and the risk of the portfolio as measured by the standard deviation. So it's basically a graph that plots the risk reward profiles of various portfolios and shows the best return based on the least amount of risk. So it is actually said that a rational investor will only ever hold a portfolio that lies directly on the efficient frontier. And I'll pop one up just so you can see what one looks like. However, some things to note when it comes to the efficient frontier is the fact that there are some limitations to it. And those limitations include various assumptions about the investments, which actually may be incorrect. Other factors, so for example, the types of investments that the investor actually wants to invest in. I feel like I said invest a lot there. Apologies. So basically, investors may actually have constraints about how the portfolio is invested, you know, when it comes to kind of ethical reasons, religion, that kind of thing. Also, the historical data that is used for all these calculations may not be stable. And, you know, if there's a crash in the economy, that will fluctuate the figures massively and probably won't be a true reflection of what's going to happen in the future. Also, transaction costs are excluded from the calculation, which could be a big factor as different providers have different charging structures. So it could also ultimately affect the returns that you are actually getting. And it also assumes that the asset classes are all index funds with the same characteristics, which of course may not be the case. So it's vital to look at these things objectively. And lastly, let's discuss the two main types of risk, which are systematic risk and non-systematic risk. So systematic risk is actually more commonly known as market risk, as it's any risk that affects the market as a whole such as the current covid pandemic you know that is affecting every single country in the whole entire world so that will affect the market as a whole rather than just impacting individual investments and systematic risk is measured using beta so as you've probably already guessed non-systematic risk is investment specific risk so in effect it's completely independent to any economic political and any other systemic factor and non-systematic risk can actually be eliminated by holding a widely diversified portfolio of investments and the actual recommended figure is 15 to 20 different investments with varying levels of correlation. So that is it on the modern portfolio theory. I hope it was useful and I hope it can assist you with your revision. So if you do have an exam coming up, good luck you'll absolutely smash it. And with that being said, I would really appreciate if you could support my channel by liking this video and also subscribing to my channel down below as it really helps my videos to reach a wider audience and hopefully help more people in reaching financial freedom. So thank you for watching and I'll see you guys back on Friday with a brand new video. Bye guys.